We're going to continue on with section 4.2, uh, which is addition and subtraction. And uh, we just talked about increment and decrement. Now we're going to talk about add and subtract. ADD, we have our destination and source. And we are essentially going to add the value from the source to the destination. Same, and subtract. Conversely, we are going to subtract the value of the source from the destination. We have the same memory rules and operand rules for as we have with the move instruction. So a few examples here. We've defined two variables, um, d words. One has a value of 1000H and the other 2000H. So in our first command, we move the value, the first one, into our EAX register. And then we are going to add the value of the second one to the EAX register. So we're essentially adding these two together. Now, if you notice, this is essentially the, the two lines that we did for our first problem, the add two numbers problem that you guys worked with in chapter three. So we add those two together, and you can see it goes from 1 plus 2 is 3 in hexadecimal, of course. For our next example on line three there, we have a value, uh, FFFFH, hexadecimal, and we are adding that to the AX register, which is essentially the lower 16 bits of the 32-bit EAX register. So you can see that the upper bits are left unchanged, 0, 0, 0, 003 and the lower bits are replaced, the zeros, with the F that we added in there. If we add one, you can see that it replaces the Fs with zeros and it increments uh, our fifth bit over to four. If we subtract one from AX, um, you can see that uh, because we're only subtracting from AX and not from EAX, it leaves the 4 and it basically subtracts 1 and changes it back to the F values. So it matters what our destination is in terms of how the addition and subtraction is performed. Next we have the negate instruction. If you recall, um, this is very similar to the 2's complement concept of a number, but the negate essentially reverses the sign of a number by converting the number to the two's complement. You could think of it as performing the operation of zero minus the number. The resulting value will be the new value. So we can see a few examples here. We have a move of our value B, which is a value of negative one, to our AL register. We negate it, and it changes it to a plus one value. For a value of plus three two seven six seven in our word very our word val w, if we negate that, it goes to negative three two seven six seven. So for and at the bottom there, we our value for uh, sixteen bit is negative three two seven three two seven six eight to plus three two seven six seven for signed values. So if we take a value of negative three two seven six eight and we negate it, that register does not al allow for a value of three two seven six eight. It only goes to three two seven six seven. So in that case, the overflow flag would be set, indicating that the value, the resulting value is too high, too much. It's outside the, the bounds. And that brings us to the discussion now of the different types of flags that are set when we do these instructions we've been talking about. Another flag is the zero flag, pretty straightforward here, but it's set when the result of an operation produces zero in the destination. And I think it's worth mentioning here that whenever we talk about these different instructions, um, whatever we're considering our source, that generally does not change. 
during an instruction, the source impacts the destination and the destination changes, but the source remains unchanged. So in this example, we're moving one to the CX register and we're subtracting one. When we do that second operation, the subtract, you can see that the zero flag ZF is set to one. And again, when we talk about these flags, they're either one or zero. When it's set, it equals one. When it's cleared, it equals zero. Similar flag is the sign flag. If the destination is negative, the sign flag gets set. So that's just how uh, the computer knows the sign of a number. If the flag is clear, the destination is positive. And the sign flag is essentially a copy of the destination's highest bit. Remember, for signed integers, the highest bit, if it's a 1, the highest bit means it's negative. If it's a 0, the highest bit, if the highest bit is 0, it means it's positive. And CPUs are generally, they work independently of or unaware of signed and unsigned integers. So when we're using them, we have to make sure that we are maintaining the correct data type with each of the instructions that we do. Next we have two flags that are pretty similar and they're used when our operation results in a value that's outside of the allowed parameters of the register. So the carry flag is set when the result of an operation generates an unsigned value. So no no positive or negative, and it's out of range. So for example, we have a hexadecimal number. We move it to our AL register. We add one. The AL register, since it's 8-bit, can only allow for the FF. We can't have a bigger number than that. That's the largest number that can be there. So if we add one to it, it's unsigned. So it's going to set the carry flag to 1 and it's going to continue the operation and it's going to set the AL register to 0 but let us know that we need to carry the number because it's essentially gone up to the next level. Similarly if we try to go below 0 and we subtract from 0 which is the lowest value that's allowed it's 0 to FF in the AL register we subtract one from it, it's going to give us a carry flag and it's going to move the AL register to FF which is the highest value but that's what would happen if we had more room. So this can be used then as an output to understand uh, how to take the results of this operation. A similar flag is the overflow flag this is set, you probably have seen errors relating to overflow um, uh, and there's all different ways that this manifests itself but it relates to somehow we've done an operation and the results don't fit inside of the register or the area that we're attempting to store the results. So the overflow flag is set when the signed result of an operation is out of range. We have two examples here, they're actually the same example. One is shown with decimal and one with hexadecimal. So we move to the AL register, which again allows values from 127 to negative 128, and it's signed in this case. We add one, and because it's signed, it's gonna use overflow instead of a carry. So the overflow is set to one, and in this case the operation does not proceed. So this is where we're in a dangerous spot here because it doesn't know what value to set. Second example is the same except it's hexadecimal. So we add 1 to 7f and uh, actually we move 7f, that's a, uh, to our A1 register so that actually uh, and then we add, and that's our problem. So next we're going to move into section 4.3 and talk about uh, operators and directives. 
And these are not executable instructions like add and subtract. Um, they're interpreted by the assembler and they are used as modifiers or descriptors of how those other directives are to work. So we're going to talk about offset, pointer, type, length of, and size, and label, which we've already looked at. The offset operator returns the distance of a label in bytes, remember bytes are 8 bits, from the beginning of the enclosing segment. So when we define several variables, um, the offset is going to tell us for a given label, which is our assembly word for variables, it's going to tell us how far from the beginning that particular label is. Here's a few examples. We've got in our data segment, we have four labels. We've got a byte, a word, byte is 8-bit, word is 16-bit, and D word is 32-bit. So, and then we reference those four variables by their offset. And we're moving it into the ESI register. So, BVAL, its offset is 0 because it's the first one. WVAL, its offset is essentially how much space is taken up by BVAL, which is 8 bits. So its offset is 1. You can see um, we're assuming here that this data segment starts, as you can see at the top, at 00404000. So again, the BVAL offset is 0. The WVAL offset is 1, uh, 1 byte. The excuse me, the WVAL offset is 1. The DVAL, the first one, is 2 because the word is 16 bits. So it's essentially two byte, two byte lengths away. And then DVAL 2 is has an offset of 7 because it starts at 7, and it's essentially because you have to add 6. 2 for the, the word offset from WVAL, and 4 for the 4-byte offset of DVAL. This concept of offset, if we think about it in terms of the higher level languages like C or C++, we, uh, there's a concept, uh, especially if you've learned it, uh, if you've taken C++, called a pointer, where we essentially are referencing a memory location of a label. And that's essentially what we're doing here with the offset. The offset is telling us, given a reference of a starting point, how far do we have to go away from that starting point to access that particular label? Where is that? Where can we find that memory? And that's really what a pointer is. The pointer is not the data itself. It is the reference to where in memory we can find that information. Next we're going to talk about the pointer operator and what it does is it overrides the default type of a label or variable. If you recall when we're using commands like move and you can see the first example here we have to have the memory size of the two operands be the same otherwise an error. So moving my double which is a D word into AX which is a word 32 bit into 16 bit causes an error. So the pointer operator allows us to essentially resize one of the two labels so that the two memory sizes are the same. So a couple of examples. We have D word, my double, and we are going to, in our first example there, we're moving it, we're changing it, we're using byte pointer, which means we're changing that 32-bit D word into a byte, which means we're taking the lowest two uh, parts of it, the lowest two numbers and we're moving that into the AL register so that number is 78H. If we use an offset of plus one we're gonna go two over and use 56. If we use a uh, t an offset of two we're gonna go over and use 34. And if we use word for our pointer instead of byte 
we're going to get all four of the lower. Five, six, seven, eight. 